Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by LittleShaman.org. That's me, Little Shaman. Today I wanted to talk to you about narcissism and the shadow self. This is something that not everyone may know about, so I thought I'd address it on the show today. The shadow self, or shadow, is not just a psychological concept, but also a spiritual one. In psychological parlance, the shadow is a Jungian concept dealing with the subconscious and everything that exists apart from the conscious mind and outside the ego. In spiritual terms, the shadow is sometimes known as the guardian of the threshold. It is the thing which stands in the way between the ego and the subconscious mind. It's sort of the bridge between these two things. And when you face the shadow self, then the communication between these two things becomes less fragmented and more clear. In both aspects, psychological and spiritual, the shadow self is the embodiment of all things we try to deny about ourselves. It's where all of these things that we find unacceptable about ourselves live. We are taught to judge things as good or bad, evil or holy. We apply these judgments to ourselves as well, and we create a rift within ourselves regarding things about ourselves that we deem good or bad. We all have thoughts, feelings, or impulses that we would never tell anyone about. Most people have even done things they hope nobody ever finds out about. But we must not deny these feelings, thoughts, or impulses, or our ability to act on them if we wanted to. We must accept these things and take responsibility for them. It's only in this way that we can truly accept ourselves. In a lot of spiritual philosophies, it's often implied that we need to be unfailingly positive. This is not reality. We are human beings, and human beings are complex. The spectrum of human behavior is wide, and there are a lot of so-called bad or negative things on it. For example, it might be surprising, but things like murder are on there. As a society, we sometimes have a tendency to pathologize negative behavior. This means we have a tendency to say that these behaviors are abnormal or sick. Many people are murderers and they are not all mentally ill, not by a long shot. This might be hard for some people to accept, but it's the truth. And if we deny that, we are ignoring our shadow self. We are denying that part of ourselves and in humanity. And in doing so, we make it more powerful. This in turn makes us more vulnerable to it, both in ourselves and in others. In shamanism, the shadow self is very important. There can be no balance without both sides, dark and light, up and down. It's all about balance. Healthy means balanced. Unhealthy is imbalanced. For example, most of us have things about ourselves that we don't like or don't want to accept. These things often disrupt our lives in some way or another. We might be uncomfortable with them and seek to hide them from other people. We might be ashamed of them or angry about them. The more imbalanced the situation is, the more unhealthy a person will be. If someone is so uncomfortable with these things about themselves that they deny or ignore them, they'll become more and more and more unhealthy. In the case of total denial of the shadow self, you can end up with the Jekyll and Hyde dynamic that we see in pathologically narcissistic people, where two completely different and non-integrated personas are existing in the same body. This is a disastrous situation, both for the person affected and everybody around them. When we face the shadow and we accept it, we master it and we can use it for healing. Narcissistic people fear their shadow selves. They believe that only when you are perfect are you valuable. To them, perfection means no so-called negativity or bad qualities, no flaws, no mistakes, no nothing like that. But in nature and in spirit, if perfection could be conceived of, it would look like balance. There is spring when everything is beautiful and bursts into life. There's also winter where everything must die. This isn't cruelty, it's necessity so that life can revitalize and rebalance itself. There are seasons in our life as well, and instead of mourning our winter, we can use it to rebalance and renew. Narcissists seem unable to do this. Their entire life is spent in mourning for a time that can never come because they don't use the winter as they should. When you're dealing with a narcissistic person, you will often find that many of your deepest wounds will be exposed. Your anger, your fears, your pain, your insecurities, your past... This is extremely painful, but it's an opportunity to face and understand these things so that you can master them and they no longer have control over you. It's an opportunity to help balance things. We're all human. We are all things, which means we're all 
dark, and light. Narcissistic people deal in absolutes. Everything is good or bad, black or white. Things labeled as both good and bad cannot exist together in the narcissistic mind. It's called splitting, and I have a few episodes of the show that detail that. Narcissists have demonized their shadow selves as bad, wrong, evil, horrible, to the point that they can't accept it or themselves. Therefore, they cannot be balanced, and of course, as you can see, they're not. Pathologically narcissistic people are the perfect example of what happens when we deny aspects of ourselves. They are perfect examples of the horrible, painful dysfunction that results when we can't integrate the different parts of ourselves into a cohesive, whole self. When you deny something, you give it more power. And the shadow self of the narcissist has been denied to the point that it's an out-of-control monster. They're afraid that if they have to face it, they could literally die. So they run from it. They ignore it. They deny it. They cover it up and pretend to be something else. They pretend it doesn't exist. We all have things about ourselves that we'd rather conceal from other people, but narcissists are not even primarily hiding it from other people. They're hiding it from themselves most of all. In a very real way, they're the perfect example of what you don't want to be. Experience with narcissists is an opportunity to do shadow work, which is a very, very important part of soul work. You have to face and accept your shadow self in order to continue on with your soul work. These wounds have to be addressed. This dark side has to be accepted. Don't fear your shadow and don't deny it. It is an important part of you. Doing shadow work is painful and scary, but it's necessary for balance. And balance is where we find peace. I hope this clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. I take appointments Monday through Friday online and over the phone, so if you're interested in speaking with me, you can visit littleshaman.org and click the book and appointment tab to go ahead and do that, or you can use the link that's available in the information section of this video. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by littleshaman.org. That's me, Little Shaman. May the Great Spirit bless you and have a wonderful day.